Hello and welcome back learners. In this series, we have discussed about many interesting things about the Russian language. We have discussed about its origin, its structure and nature. We have also discussed about the Russian alphabet. If you remember that in the Russian alphabet, we have 33 letters out of which there are 21 consonants and 10 vowels. Including that we have two signs in that. You know that in Russian language with the help of these consonants and vowels, we have pronounced them and used them in words and expressions individually as well as when they are combined together. When these vowels and consonants are pronounced separately, they produce a distinctive sound. But when they are combined, they produce altogether a new sound. This was the basic to the Russian phonetics. Later on, we have also discussed about certain other things like the devoicing of consonants. In that, with a few examples, we have seen that how certain consonants are being changed into some other sounds. According to that, we have also seen that with the help of these new words and expressions, we also made a few sentences. These sentences were the simple sentences as well as we have with the help of da and niyat made affirmative and negative sentences. You very well know the role of intonation in Russian. For interrogative sentences, we have used intonations at a very good point. For example, whenever intonations plays a vital role, it rises in the end when it is a question being asked or simply you can say it an interrogative sentence has been made. Whenever it is affirmative with the help of the, we have a pause and then the intonation is flat. Later on, we have discussed about pronouns in Russian like the personal pronouns, the possessive pronouns and the demonstrative pronouns. The personal pronouns like ya, ti, on, ana, mui, vi and ani, whereas the possessive pronouns moi, toi, nash, wash, yivo, yo, ik. And we have also seen the usage of soi, swaya, swayo and swai. Demonstrative pronouns like etat, eta, eta and echi are being also used in several sentences. We have also discussed in a very detailed manner the usage of verbs as verbs play a very important role in Russian speech altogether and they are used very much in almost all sentences when we talk in Russian. Now you know that in Russian the verbs belong to several categories. There are verbs which belong to the category where they end with the n soft sign. There are several other verbs which ends in s and ya. Chitach, pisach, goliach, gavarich, etc. as well as zanimatsa, uchitsa belong to the next category. We have seen that how with the help of personal pronouns we conjugate these verbs in a fixed sequence like for example if we conjugate chitach ya chitayu ti chitash ona na chitayat mui chitayam vi chitayche and ani chitayut accordingly we have seen the usage of several other verbs belong to the category called glagoli dvizhenya or the verbs of motion in the verbs of motion, we have seen the usage of two groups. One is ichi and yekhach. The second one is khajij and yezjij. As we know that ichi and khajij, they are used when we talk about a movement on foot. We also know that in the previous lesson, we have discussed about the usage of ichi and khajij, yekhach and yezjij in different context with the help of several other such examples. Like, we know that in the prepositional case we use va and na, whereas we also use va and na in glagoli dvizhenya. But what are the differences? We know that if we use ichi and khajij, ye khachen yezjij in glagoli dvizhenya, 
as well as with the help of va and na there is no change when the noun is of masculine gender like my sestra kash dijen khojit vinci tut whereas it would have been used as my sestra uchit sa vinci tut hai if we talk about this sentence in prepositional case as promised dear learners we will be discussing in a very detailed manner about the usage of ichi khajij ye khajniye jij in russian in this lesson we will also be discussing about the usage of ichi khajij ye khajniye jij in past tense we will discover how the nouns of feminine gender are being changed when they are used with these verbs of motion so shall we go ahead please pay attention to this slide while we discuss the usage of ichi and khajij in several context here as we know that when we use ichi and khajij we talk about the usage of ichi ye khaj as group 1 because it indicates a movement in single direction whereas when we use khajij and ye khaj we talk about a movement which is either to and fro repeated or in multiple directions and we also use kaash da inak da chaas da etc when we talk about multiple directions or repetitive action or to and fro action so with the help of this fundamental rule we will be able to make several sentences but before that let's pay attention to the usage of ye khaj and ye jij in past tense Remember the past tense form of verbs ye khaj and ye jij are also used like we have used them in ichi and khajij Whenever it is a masculine singular we use l like ya ye khal tu ye khal on ye khal If it is a feminine singular we use l plus a ye khala ya ye khala tu ye khala ana ye khala whereas whenever it is a plural which is irrespective of gender we use l and e that is ye khali mui ye khali vi ye khali and ani ye khali accordingly the past tense forms of the verb ye jij also changes like ye jil for masculine singular For example, ya yes jil, tu yes jil, on yes jil. Accordingly, for feminine singular, we have yes jila, ya yes jila, tu yes jila, ana yes jila. And for plural, which is irrespective of its gender, we use yes jili, mu yes jili, vu yes jili, ani yes jili. Accordingly, with the help of this, we can make sentences. Vchira ya yekhal damoi rana. Kaj de leta mai raji chili yes jili jirevnu. These kind of examples you can also make with the existing knowledge of verbs of motion which has been taught to you in the previous sessions. As you know the fundamental rule how to change yekhaj and yes jich into past tense forms. Let's repeat. regarding how these verbs of motions ichi khajij and ye khaj and ye jij are being converted in the past tense forms ichi as we know that in the past tense form it is shol shla and shli accordingly for ye khaj we have ye khal ye khala and ye khali for khajij we have khajil khajila and khajili and for yesij we have yesjil yesjila and yesjili let's pay attention to a few examples now so that it is clear to you when to use and how to use the past tense forms of these verbs of motion here we have certain examples where we will ask the question with sto and as well as we will be using the question kuda first we will take the masculine singular noun while answering the question kuda 
as you know kuda means where to sto eta eta muzye kuda ya idu f muzye sto eta eta gorad my yedim f gorad sto eta eta sanatori on chasta khodit v sanatori here if we pay attention that we have used the nouns of masculine gender in singular muzie gorad and sanatori we have used the question kuda where we will be using the verbs of motion in their conjugated forms the first one is eta muzie this is a museum ya idu f muzie i am going on foot to the museum at a gorad this is a city muyedim f gorad we are going to the city at a sanatore this is a sanatory on chasta khodit f sanatori he oftenly goes to the sanatory as in russian we have several such words in masculine which ends with e kratki which ends with consonants which are hard and several other examples where noun ends with ye e kratki like muzye like sanatori and like gorat and accordingly we have seen that with the examples we have used ichi and khajij in their own conjugated forms we have also with the help of a usage of khajij we have used chasta as we know that whenever we use kashdi chasta in agda we always use the second group that is khajij and yesdij which indicates movement to and fro repetitive or multiple directions let's go to the next example so that we can understand the usage of these verbs of motion in the nouns of feminine gender here again we have several other examples before going to the nouns of feminine gender let's discuss about the usage of several other nouns which belong to the neuter gender as we know that in russian we have three genders that is the masculine gender the neuter gender and the feminine gender neuter gender words or nouns which ends with o ye and ee how they are changing and what are the changes we see when we use them with the verbs of motion at large we know that how the masculine endings and the neuter endings are similar when they are used in the verbs of motion let's see please look at this slide while i read these examples for you neuter singular noun while answering the question kuda sto eta eta ministerstvo sto eta eta posolstvo sto eta eta obshejitye here we have used several examples of neuter gender like what is this eta ministerstvo this is the ministry sto eta what is this eta posolstvo this is the embassy sto eta eta obshejitye and what is this this is hostel and when we use them with the question kuda we have kashdi jen on khodit ministerstvo here if you pay attention that we have used kashdi which indicates to and fro repetitive or multiple directions kashdi jen on khodit ministerstvo every day he goes to the ministry turisti chasta khodit posolstvo tourist they oftenly go to the embassy and sichas ya idu vapshe jiti right now i am going to the hostel dear learners now as we know that how we use certain other such 
questions like Stoeta with the neuter gender nouns and when the same is applied with the Glagoli Dvizhenia, what are the changes? We see that Obshajitie, Ministerstva, etc. are being used in the same fashion, there is no change, but we put the Ichi and Khajij, Ye Khajin Yezjij in their conjugated forms with the help of certain other expressions like Schasta, Inagda and Khashde. That is why let us pay attention once again to the slide and understand it in a more efficient manner. Kashdi jen on khojit ministerstva. Here we have used kashdi, that is why we are using khajit in its conjugated form on khojit ministerstva. We have used the preposition f with ministerstva, and there is no change in the word ministerstva, it remains same. Then we have used chasta again in the second sentence, where turisti, which is a plural, that is why. Khajij has been used in its plural form. Turisti chasta khojit pasolstva. Pasolstva remains same. We have used it with the preposition va. Then we have used ichi in its conjugated form, where we have used the personal pronoun ya, ya idu, ya idu kuda, ya idu vapshajitye. Vapshajitye remains same along with the preposition va has been used, but you need to remember that whenever sichas is being used, it is always to be used with which indicates a movement in a single direction. That is why we have used sichas yaidu vopshe jichie, and accordingly, you can also use sichas yaidu pasostva yaidu va vopshe jichie or any other neuter gender noun which you wish to use in your own sentences. Dear learners, now we have a fair idea that how masculine gender nouns as well as how the nouns of neuter gender are being used in Russian especially when they are used with glagoli dvizhenia or the verbs of motion. We also know that these verbs of motion are also being conjugated in the past tense form. You can also use these past tense forms in your own sentences where you need to indicate that the action was happened in the past. Vchera ya ye khalda moi, vchera ana ye khala vinstitut, vchera mui ye khali vkino. These kind of things or these kind of sentences you can also use in your own sentences. Proshlai god. Mui chasta khajili flis su as we use them in the prepositional case. And when we use glagoli dvizhenia, we must use prosh like god mui chasta khajili flies. Here, lies, which means forest, remains flies. There would be no change as we have seen them while using gijia. Accordingly, dear learners, you can also use these verbs in your own context in the form of dialogues as well as in the form of small text. Since with the help of these dialogues and text, you will be able to use them in a more efficient and correct manner. Let us go to the next section and understand how these verbs of motions are being used especially when we talk about the nouns of feminine gender. Let us see what are the changes takes place especially when nouns of feminine gender are used with ichi khajit, ye khachin yezjit. Please pay attention to this slide while we discuss it. Here if you pay attention that we have questions shtoyata and kuda like we have just learned in the case of masculine and neuter gender. Shtoyata, eta biblia cheka, kuda vecharam ya khajruf biblia cheku. Eta jirevnya, sichas mi yejimf jirevnyu. If we pay attention to the sentences, here we have used biblia cheka and jirevnya. As we know that in Russian, 
the feminine gender nouns they ends with a ya and ia like komnata biblioteka auditoria direvnya certain such examples will be used while we discuss them with the verbs of motion and accordingly what are the changes isto eta eta biblioteka and it has been changed into vecharam ya khaju biblioteka in the evening i go to the library here we have used khaju verb biblioteku in its own conjugated forms with the personal pronoun ya vecharam ya khaju v biblioteku biblioteka is changing into biblioteku kazhdi god mi yezdim v moskvu vchera mi yekhali Derivative. These are the examples which we can also use either in the past present form or in the past form. Like you have just seen, we have used "včera my je khali derivative." Yesterday we went to by transport, of course, to the village, and accordingly, "večerom ja khaju v biblioteku." In the evening, I go to the library, and Každé léto my jezdím v Moskvu. Here we have used Moskva as Moskvu because we have used verbs of motion, and in this case we have used jezdit. Dear learners, with the help of these examples, especially when we discussed about the usage of these verbs of motion in the masculine gender, in the neuter gender, and now in the feminine gender. nouns we have seen that while discussing about the masculine gender there is no change in the noun only we use preposition va and na depending upon the context while these verbs of motion are being used in their own conjugated forms likewise in the neuter gender nouns also we have seen that there is no change in the noun like and we have also used the prepositions like wa and na and these verbs of motion in their own conjugated forms but in the feminine gender nouns we have seen that there is change in the ending of these nouns like biblioteka changes into biblioteku direvnya changes into direvnyu so accordingly we will be discussing more about the usage of verbs of motions when they are used with adjectives as well as when they are used with prefixes let's understand the usage of such verbs in different context let's pay attention to this slide so that we can discuss and understand the basic of the usage of verbs of motion in different context here with the help of a text because through text we use several words expressions which are new along with the verbs of general nature as well as verbs of motion please pay attention to the intonation pronunciation of these words and sentences while i read it for you moy brat ochin lyubit jirevnyu tam imu naravitsa chistoy vozduh Shirokie palya, balshie zilioni dzieve. Here we are discussing about that. My brat ochin lyubit dzievnyu. In Russian, as we have discussed, the usage of cases. In this particular case, we are using the accusative or vinichil nipadiyer. where with the usage of verbs like lubich chitach etc the question is asked sto ya chitayu etu knigu luji lubit chitach knigu moy brat lubit jirevnyu etc whenever there is a noun of feminine gender it changes into u and u depending upon the usage like in the case of in this text moy brat Lubit, Jirevnyu. 
Let us go to the next sentence now and understand the usage of such other words and expressions. Tami Munaravitsa Chisti Vozdug. There he likes the clean or fresh air. For clean air, we used an expression Chisti Vozduk. Shirokia Palya Wide fields. Barshi Zilioni Jerevia Big green trees. Jerevia Nitak Shumna Kak Vgorejia. In the village, it is not as chaotic as in the cities. For chaotic, we have used the word shumna. In this case, like we are now discussing about several such expressions which are used for comparison also. Like vgoreje shumna, jirevyak ni tak shumna. So, in the cities, it is very chaotic, whereas in the village, it is not so chaotic. Whereas, shum, shumna, as we are using them as a noun and as an adverb, we can also use them in the own context. We will be discussing more about the text and we will understand them in a more efficient and correct manner. We will also be using the vocabulary the words and expressions along with the usage of verbs in the next session. With this, I will conclude this session. Thank you.